Thorin II, son of Thrain II, was born in 2746 of the Third Age in the Lonely Mountain. He is born grandson to Thror, the king of Erebor, and is the eldest sibling to his brother Frerin and his sister Dis. Thorin is 24 years old when Smaug sacks Erebor and drives the dwarves from their home. While his father and grandfather escaped using the secret back door, Thorin was one of the fortunate few dwarves who were not inside the mountain at the time of the attack. Thorin goes into exile with the rest of his people. They flee to the south and end up settling in Dunland. After 20 years of exile, having lost his kingdom and his home, Thror becomes despondent. He gives Thrain his ring of power and leaves with just one other dwarf, Nar, and travels north, hoping to see the dwarven city of Khazad-dûm. They come to the east gate of Moria, finding it open. Ignoring his companion's pleas to beware, Thror goes through the gates. Nar hides nearby for many days until Thror's body is flung down the steps, his head severed. An orc tells Nar to carry a message. If any of your people poke their foul beards and here again, they will fare the same. Go and tell them so. But if his family wish to know who is now king here, the name is written on this face. I wrote it. I killed him. I am the master. Then Nar turned the head and saw branded on the brow in dwarf runes so that he could read it the name Azog. That name was branded in his head and in the hearts of all the dwarves afterwards. Nar stooped to take the head, but the voice of Azog said, Drop it. Be off. Here's your fee, beggar beard. A small bag strikes Nar containing a few coins of little worth. Weeping, Nar flees down the silver load. Looking back, he sees the orcs hacking up Thror's body, feeding the pieces to the crows. The War of the Dwarves and Orcs. Nar returns to Dunland, and upon hearing of the events, Thrain, now king of his people, declares war upon the orcs. He calls all seven houses of the dwarves together to enact their vengeance. In 2793, three years after Thror's death, the dwarven host departs for war, and over the next six years, they assail and sack all the orc strongholds they can find, one by one, from Mount Gundabad in the north to the Gladden in the south. Little is known about the war, aside from the fact that most of it is fought underground, in the great mines and tunnels of the Misty Mountains. The war comes to its climax in 2799, when the Battle of Azana Bazaar is fought in the Dimril Dale below the East Gate of Moria. During the battle, Thrain and Thorin are both wounded, and Thorin's brother Frerin is killed. When Thorin's shield breaks, he uses an oak branch to block the blows of his foes. The battle is a famously bloody one, which the dwarves are victorious in, thanks to the late arrival of the dwarves from the Iron Hills. Dane Ironfoot kills Azog, avenging Thorin's grandfather. They place Azog's head on a pike and put in his mouth a small bag of coins. Despite their victory, no dwarf dared to re-enter Moria out of fear of Durin's bane. In memory of the battle, Thorin swears to always bear a plain shield of oak with no device until he should be hailed as king, earning him the name Oakenshield. The Blue Mountains. After the war, Thorin and Thrain, along with the other survivors of Durin's folk, return to Dunland. Soon afterwards, they begin to wander through Eriador, finally settling in the Blue Mountains, the Arid Luin. There, they would prosper like they had not done in years. They forge objects out of iron and slowly increase their numbers. All the while, they still long to return to the Lonely Mountain. During this time, Sauron's power grows. It's possible that as his power grew, so too did the ring's influence over Thrain. His burning desire for gold and to return to Erebor becomes too great, and in 2841, he sets out on an expedition to return. Thorin, now 95 years old, would never see his father again. Thrain is separated from the rest of his dwarves, and Sauron captures and imprisons him in Dol Guldur. Thorin now becomes the king of Durin's folk. In the appendices of the Lord of the Rings, it is said that during this time, the years lengthened, the embers in the heart of Thorin grew hot again, as he brooded on the wrongs of his house and the vengeance upon the dragon he had inherited. 
He thought of weapons and armies and alliances, and his great hammer rang in his forge. But the armies were dispersed, and the alliances broken, and the axes of his people were few. And the great anger without hope burned him as he smote the red iron on the anvil. The Quest of Erebor. 100 years after Thrain left the Blue Mountains, Thorin meets Gandalf by chance in Bree. They proceed to go to Thorin's halls where they discuss their mutual interest in removing Smaug. Gandalf advises Thorin to take with him a company of dwarves as well as the hobbit Bilbo Baggins. Gandalf invites the dwarves to Hobbiton, instructing them to look for a smile whose door was marked with the sign of the thief. Thorin was only convinced that the quest would be profitable to him when Gandalf revealed Thror's map and key. It was given to me by your father, my friend. It is yours now. The morning the company departs, Gandalf finally convinces Thorin to take Bilbo along on the quest. After their encounter with the trolls, they find in the trolls' cave a hoard of treasure, including blades made in the ancient elf city of Gondolin. Thorin finds a sword that Elrond determines to be Orcrist. This is Orcrist, the goblin cleaver. Thorin pledges to honor the sword and hopes it will be used to cleave goblins once again, which it does later in Goblin Town. While the company is in Rivendell, Elrond also reads the moon letters on Thror's map, instructing Thorin to stand by the gray stone when the thrush knocks, and that the setting sun with the last light of Durin's day will shine upon the keyhole. Later, when the dwarves are captured by the elves of Mirkwood, Orcrist is taken from Thorin, not to be returned while the dwarf lived. King Under the Mountain When the company reaches Esgaroth, Thorin is greeted warmly by the men of the lake. They hail the return of the King Under the Mountain. After Smaug is slain by Bard the Bowman, Thorin is able to officially take control of Erebor once again. After hearing the news of Smaug's demise, Thorin fortifies the main entrance of the mountain. Thorin, now succumbing to dragon sickness, refuses Bard's claim to a share of the treasure until the elven host had withdrawn. Be gone! Ever arrows fly! Bard, refusing to send the elves away, declares the mountain under siege until Thorin gives them their share of the treasure. Thorin sends for his cousin Dane Ironfoot via Raven Messenger. Bilbo, seeking to end the dispute, secretly gives the Arkenstone to Bard and Thranduil to use to make a deal with Thorin. Upon hearing of this perceived treachery, Thorin is furious and casts Bilbo out of the company. Dane brings over 500 dwarves from the Iron Hills to aid his cousin. All disputes among men and elves and dwarves were set aside when the army of Balg, the son of Azog, suddenly attacks. The three armies of elves, men, and dwarves unite against the armies of goblins and wargs in the Battle of Five Armies. During the battle, Thorin is gravely wounded. Keely and Feely rush to protect their uncle, a deed that would result in their own deaths. After Bilbo is found alive, he is brought to Thorin on his deathbed. Thorin apologizes to Bilbo for his angry words and deeds. He praises Bilbo's good character, courage, and friendship, saying, if more of us valued food and cheer and song above hoarded gold, it would be a merrier world. With these final words, Thorin dies in the presence of his friend, Bilbo Baggins. Thorin is laid to rest deep within the Lonely Mountain. Bard places the Arkenstone on Thorin's chest and Thranduil lays Orcrist upon his tomb. It is said that ever after the sword gleamed if foes approached Erebor. The dwarves of the Lonely Mountain would forever afterward be warned of coming enemies thanks to the sword of Thorin, the king under the mountain, who had reclaimed their home. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe and share. That helps a lot, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.